All right, in this video, this is the custom calendar from scratch part nine, and today we're gonna to focus on the today indicator. We're also gonna look at a few cosmetic things to change the way our calendar looks in terms of the cell width and the cell height. Now, right now I have CraftCal V5 loaded up. This is the fully complete calendar. You can get this from my free components folder. But today is December 21st, and we do have a little indicator here showing that. And as each day changes, it will go to the next day. Something I have mentioned earlier in the series, though, when you jump to a new month, you will not see that transition from December to January, for example. What you'd have to do there is just simply tap the month up here, and then it will automatically jump to the new month. But all of that aside... We're gonna focus on getting the today indicator and then the cosmetic changes are going to be the following. If I scroll down to the list global in CraftCal V5 and I change the shape to a circle, we can change the indicator to a circle and then we can also change it to a rectangle. Now you may say, well, we don't see a rectangle here, we see a square. Well, if we scroll up and these are gonna be some new globals that we're going to add, we have this date height and a cell width. The cell width allows us to adjust the width of the cell. And then this date height, we could also call this the cell height, so to speak. But if I make this date height smaller, notice we are kind of squeezing in our dates, getting more of a rectangular cell look. And now we can see that this today indicator is in fact a rectangle. Just a few things to bear in mind as we create this. If I come back to the today shape and I change this to a circle or a square, either one of these will bump it back to where these cells are essentially going to be a square shape because the circle and the square, they're both related to the cell width. So notice if I bump the cell width up, or if I bump it down, that square is changing size based on the size of those cells. The same thing applies to the circle. So if I change my today indicator to a circle, we don't really see any size difference. All we see here is the circle indicator, but the circle is linked to the cell width as well. And we're going to see all of that as we work on this part nine of the custom calendar from scratch. So calendar from scratch part nine. Now we do have a few codes in here that we're going to look at, but I'm going to show you again, if you've been following this series, I've talked about the SI module index. We don't have to use the SI module index here, but I'm going to show you how we can easily edit each individual cell and it does not take up a lot of time at all. You only have to edit two cells and then you're going to copy and paste those and bam, you have your edited calendar in a matter of seconds. So calendar from scratch part nine, let's go over to globals and let's go ahead and add some of these new globals here. The today color and hide. So here are those two new globals and I'm gonna go ahead and swipe on over to the tutorial, the part nine that you see right here. Today color, I'm just gonna set it to something that we can easily see such as a green. And the hide, you wanna set this to a transparent. So just drag that bar all the way over to the right. Let's go ahead and add the list global today shape, and we're gonna add square, circle, and R-E-C-T for rectangle. So here's our today shape, and I'll just set that to a square for right now. Our number global, date, H, date, height. I'm gonna set that to around 50 or 60. And for the text globals, I'm not going to use these codes just yet. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to apply color to them. And then when we apply these codes, you'll see how these codes narrow it down to the exact date of today. And that will be the only green square that we're gonna see right here in a little while. But for now, I'm just gonna give a text global of row one today color and other row today color. And I'm gonna set both of these right now as a text global, and I'm just gonna set it equal to this color global here. So row one today color and other row today color. Let's set each one of these right now to just simply today color. Now we have to have two of these based on the way I created this calendar. Remember row one has its own set of conditions and then the rest of the rows have their own set of conditions as well. Now I know you're thinking, well, why don't we just use the today color color global, but in a minute we're gonna come back to these text globals here and we're going to apply these codes. That's why we must have a text global to get the today indicator to work correctly. So with all those things added, let's go over to items, everything, all the rows, 
And what I want to do first for row one, I'm going to open up the row one that we have here and I'm going to delete everything except for one item. All right, so now we have this one here. Let's go inside of there. Now, this shape, this original shape that we have here, this is what we can use for our today indicator. So I'm going to rename this to today indicator. For this today indicator, for the shape, let's apply a global. And that global needs to be today shape. So now we have a square there. And actually what we need to do uh, to address the rectangle, the square and the circle are going to both be linked to the width, the cell width. But if we want to apply a rectangle, we're going to have one more condition down here. So I'm just going to back out and go to my globals real quick. And I'm going to change that shape to a rectangle. Now you may notice a size difference there. And the reason why date height is different than that of the cell width that we did earlier in the series. So let me go to my items, everything, all the rows, row one. And for this today indicator, notice we do have a rectangle now and I just need to apply that date height number global to this one here. Now date height is only going to be applied when we have a rectangular shape selected. Let me go to the paint. Let me go to its color and we're going to apply that text global. Since we are on row one, we want to use row one today color, this one right here. So now we should see a green rectangle and we can see that. And now before I copy and paste into row one, I'm going to go back to globals and I'm going to make sure everything is working the way it should. Cell width, that is making the rectangle wider, but it's not changing the height. Then if I come down here to date height, this should make the rectangle taller and it does. Now it's not changing these yet because we have not linked these new variables to these other rows. But what I want you to notice now, if I change my shape, if I change it to a square or circle, date height is no longer going to be a factor. So we're going to see the cell width. The cell width here should get applied to both the circle and the square. And we're going to double check all of that right now. So let's change this to a circle. We have our circle, let me go to my items and let's make sure that this circle does have the correct global applied to it. The width, cell width. And that's going to apply both to the circle and the square. Now, technically speaking, I don't want to see this circle indicator because it's not December or November 26th or whatever. This is an overlap date, remember? So I want this to actually go away. So I'm gonna come back to the globals and for the row one today color, we actually don't want to use today color unless today is that date that we see. Well, that's where this code right here comes into play. We'll copy that and I'm gonna explain it to you. So here's the code and right now we see a transparent color. If I check that, that green circle, square, or rectangle, or whatever you had should be gone now because it's applying the GV hide. Let's talk about this code. Row one today color. Well, some of these things in here, if GV month equals DFM. So just a quick review, DF with a capital M is going to return the number of whatever month it is. Earlier in the series, we created a GV month and that could be the numbers one through 12. So if GV month equals the current month that it is, GV row one, that's how we're getting the dates for row one. So whatever numbers we have in row one, if it's equal to whatever current day it is, that's DF lowercase d, and today is December the 21st. So whatever number we have on row one, if it was equal to 21, and if GV year is equal to the actual year that it is, DFY, the current year that it actually is, is 2018. So if GV year, our global year, if that's equal to the current year, oh, and then there's even one more condition. DFD if it's less than or equal to seven. And the reason why this last little part of the code here, DFD less than or equal to seven, is important because we can have some overlap from previous months, so we never want to see a today indicator on those dates. So if all of these conditions are met, then we want to return GV today color. All of them have to be true for that entire statement to be true. All we have to have is one of these to mess up to return GV hide, and that's going to be that transparent color. I hope that makes sense. So now we have row one today color applied. Now let's come and do the other rows today color, but I'm gonna leave it just like this for right now because I'm really gonna show you the power of the module index. Yes, we're about to make things really green here, but just hang tight and you'll see what I'm talking about. 
let's go back to our items, everything, all the rows, and I'm going to delete all of the other rows except for one of them. And before I actually do that too, before I proceed with this, let me go back to row one. And since we have everything working here, I'm just gonna take that overlap group that has the today indicator, which is hidden, and the numbers, all that good stuff. Let's copy and let's paste, and we're going to fill up our first row yet again. So now backing out of here, let's take this other row, the second row that we're on right now. I'm going to delete all of these items with the exception of one. Now, I don't know why this shows a nine because we can in fact see that it is a three and it should be a three. And there it goes right there, it did change. Don't worry about what you see here, everything's working fine. But anyway, for this one, let's go to the shape and let's do the same thing with this one. Let's rename it to Today Indicator. Let's go to that shape. Let's apply that list global. Let's also go over to paint. Let's set the paint to other row today color. And for right now, it's always gonna return that green. Now you can't really see the three there, but it is still there. And one more thing I need to do real quick is go back to my globals. I need to change that shape to a rectangle. Go back to my items, go to everything, all the rows, other row, and let's go to this today indicator for rectangle and let's apply that date height to it as well. So before we copy and paste, let's go back to our globals again and let's just make sure everything is changing the way it should when I change the shape. So if I change this to a circle or a square, we should see these kind of squeeze in some. Square, we did squeeze them in. Circle, we should not see a size difference, just a change in the shape. If I go back to rectangle and I adjust the date height even more, we should see all of these getting taller because even though we don't see the rectangles up here because they're hidden, they're transparent, they're still there. It's just that we don't see them. And if I squeeze this in, we should have more of a squished calendar, if you will. But nonetheless, I'm gonna set this to a circle. Let's go back to items. We're about to see a lot of green. For all the rows, other row, I'm gonna take this one and fill up the second row. So we have a lot of green. I'm going to back out of this other row. I'm going to copy the other row and I'm going to paste this to fill in the rest of my rows for the calendar. And the most we're going to need ever is six rows. So we have a lot of green going on right now. And the reason why the today indicator in all of these other rows is using the other row today color. If I go over to globals and look at other row today color, we simply have it set to what the today color is. Well, this code that we have here, I'm gonna copy and paste that into this text global now. And the code is very similar. If GV month equals whatever month it currently is and GV other rows is equal to the current date. So all these dates that we have on the other rows, whichever one is equal to the actual current date that it is, but also GV year has to be equal to the current year. And then we also need this condition right here. And this is probably not gonna to make too much sense right now. I had to actually stop and think about why I had this in there, but GV other row date color, if that's equal to GV normal color. And this has something to do with the overlap that we can have when we go into the next month. For example, we're in December now. When you go into January, we're gonna start seeing January dates on our calendar. Well, those are going to have an overlap color applied to them so we don't ever want to see a today indicator on those dates because we're going to be in an entirely different month. So this little part of the code here is just saying, hey, other row date color, if it's equal to a normal color, that means that date is on the actual current month of the calendar that we're on. I know that's totally confusing along with the rest of this series, but that is needed here. And if all of these conditions are met, then we want to return GV today color and if just one or more of these conditions are not met, then we want to return GV hide. Now watch this. When I press check, we don't have all those greens. All we have is the green that's on the current date that it is. Now we can come back in here, we can adjust our color down a little bit. I'm gonna set this to a darker color. So there's our today indicator. Checking the shapes, square, Rectangle, that's gonna change the way the calendar looks because remember rectangle, we're linking in that new date height number global right here. 
And then one more important thing to note here too is that if we bump over to January, uh, right now the advanced editor is showing a today indicator uh, for that same spot on the calendar. Well, it should not be doing that. So let's just save this. Let's go back to the home screen. And now notice I'm on March 2019. If I tap my month up here, it's going to jump back to December and we are seeing the today indicator just for December 21st. And if I back up, I'm gonna back up to December of 2017 so our year is not matching anymore and we should not see any today indicator. The only time we should see a today indicator is on the current month that it actually is. And if we are on that month in our calendar, we should see that date. And again, just repeating something one more time too, when we get down here to December 31st and we bump on over to January 1st, uh, we're not gonna see a today indicator. And also this calendar is not going to automatically jump to January. So uh, all you would do there is just tap this and it would load up the current month and you should see a today indicator on January 1st of 2019 right there. But uh, yeah, there you have it. That's how you get the today indicator to work two codes here and the rest of the stuff is just uh, basic colors list and number globals and that's it for this video i hope it helped